Hi, this is Ian from One Code Camp. Welcome to our lesson on templates in web development. From our past videos, we were able to catch a glimpse of how easy as templates work. If you did watch the videos prior to these, we created a simple to-do list app. If you haven't, please watch it because it will help you greatly in understanding EJS better. And then also aside from the project we did, we also um, even talked about common errors that we might encounter while we're using EJS. But today, we will give more emphasis to the importance of templates, why they are essential in modern web development, and how they can greatly improve our code's reusability and maintainability. Templates in general is a fundamental concept in all other areas of computing. But in the context of web development, a template is a pre-designed layout or a structure that serves as a starting point for creating any web pages. These templates separate the content of a web page, such as the text, the images, or all those other data from the presentation itself. The templates, we uh, define it and it also defines the overall structure and layout of any web page especially the ones that we are seeing in our time now the modern web pages available online they help us determine where different elements just like the headers the navigation bars the content sections and what else footers so it determines where all those different elements should be placed at now here are the advantages of templates that we will need to understand for us to really grasp the idea of using this readily made template for the next um, web page or for the next um, web project that we will be developing. So the first advantage of us using any templating language is first for code um, reusability. So templates it is designed to be reusable. Instead of us creating the entire structure of each web page, you can just use the same template for multiple pages, especially if they kind of have um, the same um, structure and it follows um, a certain type of pattern. Now, this reduces the duplication of code and, of course, other maintenance efforts and other, of course, um, resources that we keep up to make our web page running. And uh, um, as a common saying, if you've heard it from before, it's like um, as avoid, uh, avoiding the reinvention of the wheel itself because that's, that will not make any sense at all. It is already here for us to reuse. We just need to adapt to how we want it to help us with our task and for us to customize how it will work for our benefit. And then the next advantage would be reusability or like the dynamic content. So templates are designed again to be reusable. And then aside from that, we often include placeholders or variables that can be filled with all of these sorts of dynamic content for example you might have a placeholder for let's say a user's name and then the template can display different names depending on who is um, visiting the, the web page or the website and then for um, consistency as our next advantage with the templates it helps us maintain the consistency in the design and in the layout of our website it's like us adhering to a certain um, color palette whenever we are doing some artwork or if you are into um, photography when well, it's just the whole sense of it so it is very crucial for creating a cohesive and professional looking website that uh, have the same or have the standard feel across all pages with one one another page to be giving this vibe and then when the user switch to another one it will be giving a totally different vibe so that's what we are trying to avoid in any of the web page or the website as a whole that we will be creating in the future and then also of course templates offers us the advantage of maintainability so with templates we promote the separation of concerns by separating the html structure or what handles the view from the logic that generates or manipulates the content which refers to controllers now this separation enhances code organization and of course like what we're discussing it's maintainability and then lastly it will help us with improved collaboration a lot i cannot um, highlight this enough but with the template it allows um, other teammates for the project that we are building like um, our designers or maybe other developers that we're working with to work on the project collaboratively designers can focus on creating the of course the visual layout of our project while us the developers can integrate dynamic content 
and functionality in 2D template itself. So, in general, templates are widely used in various web development no matter what frameworks or what the content uh, management systems or most commonly known as CMS is being used to somehow streamline the process of creating web pages. It provides a structured approach to building websites and it makes it easier to manage and scale any type of um, web projects. And then moving on to other or to the available templating languages that we can use. So aside from EJS, we have the most commonly used ones like the handlebars. And then we also have the mustache. But of course, we will not be uh, discussing any of these two. We will be focusing mainly on EJS for this hour tutorial. All right. Now that we have a deeper understanding of what really are about, we can now say that we are convinced to use say so for myself. So now let us see um, how it works in action. Let me just close this window here. And then on our desktop, um, we will be creating a folder for our sample project that we will be creating to demonstrate how EJS templating uh, works. So here, once we have the project located in our desktop, let's also open our Visual Studio code. Once this is up, let us locate the folder that we created from our desktop, open folder, and then this is the folder we created. Hit on select folder, and then let's just close these windows in here. Okay. Now, the first thing we want to do is to install the um, dependencies or everything that we need to create first a node um, project or an, a node directory. The way we do it is we will need to open our uh, terminal. You can open up open that up using the buttons up here that says terminal and then just go push new terminal or you can just um, also use the keyboard shortcuts control shift backtick just like what's indicated in here so let's do that all right once this is up once your terminal is up i um, want you to make sure that it is pointing at the exact or the correct location of the folder we created our ejs folder and then once this is now here let us initialize node by saying npm init dash y. All right. And then once we have this file in here and inside our EJS folder that says package.json, we're now ready to start installing. So we will need now to run the command npm install. You can actually just say i whenever you're installing dependencies, but us as beginner as possible so he can better uh, remember them for further use. So we are installing Express, and then we can also install EJS at the same time. So hit on Enter, and let's just wait for that to load up. Now, once you see that a folder named node underscore modules has been in here, that means it has been able to successfully install the commands or the dependencies that we asked for it to install. So it's still inside our EJS, we are going to create what will serve, let's name it app.js. And then inside, again, we are still inside the EJS folder. We'll be now creating another folder this time. And then let's give it a name of views. Now inside this view folder, this is what's going to handle every template, all of the EJS template that we will be using for the entire web page or for the entire project that we will be working inside this project directory. But of course, for demonstration purposes, um, we will be only uh, creating a single page or a single file inside this views folder that let's name it maybe just index.ejs. So bear in mind that we will need to use the um, extension name .ejs for us to tell Node that we would like to use EJS as our templating language. Now that we were able to successfully create a very simple um, structure for this folder, um, let us now start putting our server code in our app.js file. So in every node project, we always start um, coding or we always start declaring everything that we need in the server file, which is again, we reference as this app.js we're looking at our screen now. So first, what we're going to do up here on the very first line is to declare a variable and then we would like to 
call it express we are now calling the express framework the express that js framework into this node that js application and then what's going to happen is we are assigning let me just type it here first express and don't forget our semicolon all right so with this first line of code it assigns the express constant variable to the express.js module it allows us to use express.js functionality into our code so we're now we'll be able to use the built-in methods and functions that express.js uh, provided to us next is we're going to declare another constant variable which is let's call it app and then we wanted to say express and then semicolon now this line we create an instance of the express application by calling these express function this function in here the app variable represents your express that js application up here and then this is what we are going to use to define the routes and all the other configuration settings that we will be implementing uh, later on in the later part of our project and then for the third and last variable we will be uh, defining our port this is um, the port that we would like our project to be uh, visible at like of course we would want to see how the project looks like so far at um, some certain point of um, our coding we will be um, using the extension of visual studio code that is the live server extension and this port that we are specifying in here is where we can specifically see our project so we are uh, identifying it as port uh, 3000 all right and then up in here uh, we want to say app that set now this is an express that uh, js configuration setting the app that set type it in here view engine now it sets the view engine this line or this uh, code in here it sets the view engine to ejs so we're kind of like telling um, our project that the view engine that we wanted to utilize would be the EJS. And that it also means that your application will use the EJS or again the embedded JavaScript templating engine to render the views. And also, of course, the templates inside it. And it will help us um, to render the EJS templates later in the code. This is the one that triggers all these EJS templates that we have inside our views folder and then next we are going to create now the, the route to render the ejs template that we created so from earlier we use app that set now we will be using app that get now this line defines and uh, actually an http get route so let me just complete the code so we this is just this this is like uh, the default address or the default place wherein um, we can see the project that we're currently working on it's like the landing page of this project this ejs project that we will later on again see um, in a bit now again this line um, defines the http get route i want you to remember that and then it also specifies that when a user makes a get request to the root url or again the landing page of our web page the code within the arrow function show that to you now so after this we are going to say rep rest and then we have here an anonymous function here so the cow these codes that we are seeing now the rest of it of anything that's inside or within the arrow function it will be executed so we are just saying our servers that anything that we put inside this arrow function whenever um, the user goes to our root URL, which serves as the landing page, this is what we want them to see. So we can define anything in here that we want visible on our user's end. And then next will be, so inside of this arrow function, we are declaring yet another variable. And then this time it will be a username. So let's just put in here E and B. Yours truly. So we're defining, we are uh, hard coding 
a username by giving it a value or by assigning it a value of in. And then down here, press that render. Down here, um, when the root URL is accessed, this line of code that we are creating now, just finish typing index username equals to username. Let us not forget our semicolon. Then another one in here. So again, this line renders an uh, EJS template that we name index. And then this is actually referring to this exact file that we have in here. And then we can like assume to be in the views directory. It also passes an object. So these pair in here are actually objects. And then this object that we have in this curly braces, it allows us to provide the dynamic data to the template, which can be now accessed using the username variable that we declare up here. So um, like what we're discussing from earlier, this is um, right now hard-coded. But of course, in um, in real-life example, we can hard code or I mean, we can like um, identify in here dynamic contents for, a, for wherein we can add in a function to our web page for the user to type in or to create um, or to find a their way to um, settle or to enter their uh, preferred username. And then that's what we are going to, of course, be rendered on or inside our um, arrow function. And then after that, outside our um, app.get method down here, we're now will be using another one, which is the app.listen. Then we specify here the port. Then we are now creating yet another arrow function. So this line now, um, we are starting the express.js server. And then we want it to listen to the specified port in here. And then we will be actually um, inserting the actual port number by using, so let's console log this for us to see it uh, appear on the console just for that double checking so we will be using template literals to integrate the port information that we indicated on the beginning of our code port so we're getting the port variable in here and then on every um, ejs line or every node that js um, code apply that we're creating we don't uh, forget the this semicolon then we need to put one in here as well and then let me take a quick look all right that's looks like it for our server let's save this don't forget to save the changes and then let's go to our index that ejs file now i remember presenting the um, ejs or like comparing it to an index or to an html file from before because it's literally just an, um, an HTML file. So from here, we will be getting the boilerplate or like the default um, code for any HTML file that we will be creating. Just push enter. And then we will now be provided with this line of codes in here. And then let's just maybe change the title. Let's just say EJS lesson. All right. And then now inside of the body, let's add in a heading tag since this is the landing page of our project let's say welcome to our website and then of course we want to use the information that we have declared so far which is you will guess username you are definitely correct so the way we integrate ejs or um, javascript information in here is by using this bunch of symbols so first it starts with an angle bracket followed by a percent sign and then this third symbol is optional depending on what type of information would you like to include it here but for our example we're using an equal sign and then we, we are now calling in our username variable we declared from our server and then we are going to close this using another percent sign and an angle bracket and then in between after the username we would like to include an exclamation point just to highlight our excitement and then maybe we can add a 
another paragraph in here. Let's say this is a simple example of uh, EJS templating. Okay. All right. So that's just it. As you can see, it is it is exactly what an HTML file looks like. But using EJS, we can integrate and make our HTML file dynamic by using EJS templating language. So let's see how this looks like on our live server. Close this. On our um, terminal, we will need to activate or to trigger our server to be initiated first. So let's close this. Then the way we do it is we just type in node and then the file name of our server, which is again app.js, and then hit on enter. All right. Now, once it shows the exact um, string, group of string that we indicated in here, it means that it runs everything without errors and that it should be displaying as the web page with the information that we displayed here on our index.ejs template. So let us now push the go live extension. I do hope you already have that installed on your Visual Studio code. If not, you can just go click on extensions. And then in here, just type in here, live server. And then for me, you will see that um, it's already installed. But if you guys have not uh, done this yet, you should see a blue a button in here that says install, just like the ones from down here. Just push that and you should now have the live server integrated on your Visual Studio code as well. So let's close this, go back to File Explorer. And then now let's just look for our code. So this is what it looks like. Let me just fix the screen so I can show you both. All right, so we identify or we specify for 3000. So once your live server is up, it should redirect you to 43,000. It should look exactly like this. And then push on enter. And this is what we wanted to see. So you can see it um, displays the exact text that we have here. And then also display, display the username that we have here on our server. The ENLI name that we have assigned as the value for the username variable. And then the rest of the text are displayed in here as well, which is a typo. We have a typographical error there. For any changes you will like need to run your server again, you can type in node.node .node space app.js again, or you can just on your keyboard, press the arrow up button. It'll provide you with the last command that you run. And then will if we refresh this, all right. No longer showing me the typographical error that I did. All right. So that concludes all the highlights of um, this video. So we again were able to introduce the concept of templates in web development. We've seen how important it is that we um, integrate um, using templating languages in the project that um, we are making, how it can enhance the code reusability, um, improve the maintainability of the codes, and then also to facilitate collaboration. For facilitating collaboration and for reusability, we actually was not able to have that demonstrated in here since we have an initial very simple um, project that we have shown. But on the next video, we are going to dive deeper into creating and using more EJS templates so that I can show you um, how we can maximize that advantage of reusability. We'll also uh, deep, uh, dig deeper on how it can help us to collaborate Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope I was um, helpful and I hope I was able to explain the importance of using uh, a templating language, not just specifically EJS, but all those other uh, templating language that we mentioned from uh, earlier. But that's it. I really hope to see you on the next video. Again, this is Ian from One Code Camp, and I do hope that you are enjoying our coding journey after this point. Goodbye and see you on the next one.